Hello and welcome to the fifth edition of Purple Ventures Zoom video podcasts. And my dear guest today is Silke Horákova from Telia Impact Ventures. We will be talking about impact investing in Czech Republic and in Europe. My name is Jan Staněk and I'm from Purple Ventures. Uh, dear Silke, may you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yes, I'm Silke Horakova. Um, I'm a German living in the Czech Republic for a long, long time, already more than 30 years. Um, professionally, I'm co-owner of Albatros Media, which is a large Czech book publishing company. And I'm the co-founder of Telia Impact Ventures, which was the first social impact fund in the Czech Republic and actually in the entire CEA region. I have also founded and co-founded two foundations. One is supporting disadvantaged, socially disadvantaged children in education, and the other one is supporting independent journalism in the Czech Republic. The talk today will be about the impact investing and with yourself, how and when the idea of impact investing within the Czech Republic came. Yes, that was actually a very precise moment in my life, um, a life-changing moment. To be frank, um, I was attending uh, on behalf of the Czech uh, Private Equity and Venture Capital Association, which I was leading at this time, um, a large conference in London. It was the 30th anniversary of the British Venture Capital Association. And there was one woman who presented um, the concept of impact investment and the results of the first impact fund in Europe, which was Bridges Ventures. And um, hearing this in the audience, that was a game changer for me. I really, it really changed my life and um, it changed my career finally. So coming back to the Czech Republic, I knew that's what I want to do, impact investing. And what was that she said and did that was so striking for you? That was the concept as such, the concept that you can combine uh, investing, uh, generating a financial return with doing social good and uh, whereby you actually are accountable for the impact and measure the impact. That's the concept of impact investment. And that was fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. So that was my career changer, finally, 10 years later. And when was it? That was in 2011, sorry, didn't mention this. And um, then coming back to the Czech Republic, I thought um, I would do it myself as an impact investor, private investor, but there was nothing to invest in. So um, I connected with people, like-minded people, and um, we started to do first um, accelerator programs for social enterprises. First one started in 2011, actually, and there were others coming more and more. Um, I was more or less involved in all of these social accelerator programs, and uh, we were looking also for targets for impact investment, and then there was a short episode of um, kind of venture philanthropy, venture philanthropy fund I was involved in. Um, uh, we may come back to this, but um, then finally, um, three years ago, we found the Telia Impact Ventures. And that was really um, meeting people in this market, uh, which had the same goal, uh, two foundations, which were, we had the intention to go into impact investment, and um, on the other side, uh, really great people from the investment sector, which by that time were philanthropists, let's say. So we all combined this um, into Telia Impact Ventures. On the one side, these um, great foundations, which were our cornerstone investors to begin with. And on the other side, these investors, uh, which helped us to set it up and are now part of our investment committee. So that was the story. And finally, three years ago, we we made it, <laughs> starting Telia Impact Ventures. And what happened during that decade that three years ago the time was right and uh, there was enough yes. targets, enough companies to invest into? Uh, two things actually. First of all, the, the sector has evolved, the so sector of social entrepreneurship. Um, with, with more and more social accelerator programs, we have actually still in the Czech Republic three or four uh, of these programs or even more. And every year there was 
thousands of social enterprises going through this process of social acceleration, business acceleration, in fact. And, um, well, there was a lot of quantity and um, some of them made it to growth, to real growth, and it was the right time. Uh, because what was lacking at, at this time was um, patient capital for social enterprises. Um, most of these social enterprises were still very much dependent on, on grants and are still at the moment, I would say. And this is not financially sustainable model. So to become more sustainable, there was this concept to help them to build sustainable um, business models, which would help them to become financially independent. So that was the story. So this history of accelerator programs and development of social enterprises in the country. And on the other side, our personal journey, um, as I said, we, we founded together with some people from the private equity sector, um, which was called um, Nest Partnership. That was in cooperation with Nest, which is an international organization supporting social entrepreneurship. And that was aiming at, uh, this small fund was aiming at uh, social philanthropy, uh, strategic philanthropy, or it's also called venture philanthropy. Um, but we were giving grants um, to social enterprises. And working with these enterprises, um, I realized actually they could return the capital and it would be even more motivating to both sides. And uh, then I came to the conclusion I want to do something different. So I worked on this concept and um, then I presented it to my partners and they said, yes, we will join you. <laughs> and that was the beginning of Telia then, the next level. May you please for yourself or how you define it to your partners, define this, uh, the topic of social impact? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, all we do uh, results in some kind of impact on something. So um, I would define it as actually the net effect of the impact of uh, the activities, in this case, of organizations on individuals or communities or even the entire society. But this should result in a net positive effect and a positive and a substantial effect um, and a substantial change, uh, which actually this change should uh, address some pressing uh, social challenges. Mm -hmm. And so what would be the examples of the uh, startups you actually did invest into within Tilia Impact Ventures? Yeah, yeah. When we started Tilia Impact Ventures, we were thinking also where the fields, where, where we can contribute um, social impact in this region. Because a lot of traditional social impact funds go to, to Africa, Asia, developing countries. But I think we find also a lot of things, social, uh, challenges um, in our region and that was actually what we were aiming at um, and um, we couldn't really decide to do this first fund um, thematically driven so we decided it should be a um, thematic agnostic approach um, because um, it is entirely as, as um, a starting sector a very early stage sector so pipeline is difficult is still difficult um, so that was intended to cover a broad range of social challenges, actually. But over the years, uh, we have actually found four areas in which we look uh, for our investments. The first one is um, transparency in society and social inclusion. Mm -hmm. Here we have made um, one investment. Um, this is a company specializing in... Um, public tenders. Uh, these are special data specialists um, in this sector and they combine actually a non-for-profit and a for-profit activity, um, both aiming at a larger impact in this area. Um, and in their non-for-profit activity they had really aimed at um, showing who are the best or the worst cases in this aspect in, in, in the practice of, of public um, tendering. And then I came up with some products who actually should help um, to make best practice um, available to, to, to all the organizations. And um, we have invested in this, in this business activity and they create a lot of um, impact um, in terms of transparency. They've come up now with a new product which is called 
controller, which means it's actually a red flag report, which points out at the risk in, in public tendering. And um, this is this area. And then we have the area of education, okay. uh, innovative solution for, for education for the future. Um, we haven't so far invested in this area, but we are always looking at this. Then we have um, environmental protection. And here we have made a strong focus on circular economy. And we have made two investments here. One is uh, providing uh, complex systems, smart systems for packaging free sale in, in retail chains. Um, and what's interesting here, it's really uh, the combination of um, technology and impact and it's covering the entire field in circularity from the producer or the retailer to the consumer. Um, and there's a second investment we have made which is uh, Circle and this is a platform which is um, a B2B platform uh, matching needs for the sale of uh, waste material between B2B partners. And they are do doing also um, a quite a part in uh, consultancy for, for large companies um, in the area of waste management. And then there's the fourth area, which is um, MedTech uh, access to healthcare systems for, with a focus on disadvantaged groups. We have made here also two investments. Um, both are actually helping um, globally or developing countries the access to healthcare. One is uh, providing cheap classes um, in um, over 15 countries now in the developing world. These classes are extremely cheap and uh, moreover they can be um, you know they can be tested and actually uh, produced uh, right on the ground in rural areas so they provide also um, jobs for micro entrepreneurs. And, and the last one is a platform who is uh, providing a communication platform for deaf people, for hearing impaired people, and they also aim at a global expansion. Mm -hmm. So these are the four areas and the investments we have made. Uh, those were the four areas of the social impact uh, which, in which you are focusing your investment attention. Uh, what other criteria are you looking at when deciding to invest into particular startup or founders? We are an impact fund, so we are looking at the impact and um, we will come back to this. We look at this um, from very different perspectives, but first of all, it should be an impact driven project. And um, the impact has different aspects. We look at the, the depths or the scale, scaling potential of the impact. Um, and we look um, at the intention of the founder to create this impact with this project. Um, and then it's important also the alignment between uh, the business model of the company and the impact it generates. In an ideal case, it should be embedded, it should be the same. So the more you develop, your, you grow your business, the more you grow your, your impact. That's the impact area um, we are looking at. Um, and then, as for any startup, you would look at the founders, and that's the most, most crucial question, of course. Uh, it's always about people. So you look at people that can actually deliver this impact. They should be impact-driven, first of all. Um, their motivation should be, first of all, impact. Um, but then, of course, there should be good start, uh, startup founders. Startup founders, what's a good startup founder? Um, you look for really ambitious people. Um, strong personalities which can um, create and motivate a team and focus and um, well it's it's about the personality of the founder but it's also the, the mix of the competences and then you look if they understand the key metrics of their business if they are able to plan their resources in a meaningful way uh, if they can work together and you know execute a business plan in fact so and then they look at the, the market as such, and that's the market opportunity. As for any other startup project, the market opportunity, unique selling point, the competition you look at. Um, and then we look at um, the stage is important for us. So we have certain criteria regarding the stage of the company. It should be for us um, the proof of concept uh, stage, which means the, the, pro the, the project has already an um, um, MVP, a, pro a product, and has done some pilot cases, let's say a pilot case, 
and um, ideal first customer attraction or at least strong implication of this. And then we look, and it's also important, which value we can actually add as a fund. And I think it should be a good match for, for the project as well. So we look if we are the right fund for the project. When it comes to added value for the project, what is your pitch towards the startups? Well, uh, well, I think in which we are really special, we are, we are an impact-driven fund. We are a um, social impact fund. We were the first in the Czech Republic and actually literally the first one in the CE region. And we have accumulated a lot of experience in this field. So if you, as a startup founder, are looking for an impact-aligned investor, which can not only drive your business development, but also your impact, then come to us, we are the right partner for you. And what else would be the uh, added value besides the, the match? The match, yes. And then um, if you look at our team, um, we are really a combination of expertise in the impact field, in uh, entrepreneurial field, and uh, in an investment field. And this combination may, makes us a bit unique, I would say. Um, we have also, and I mentioned this before, these incredible people in our investment committee. And they're really, I would say, belong to the leading startup investors, not only in the Czech Republic, but in the entire region, um, like um, Jan Barta from Perfire Capital, Andrzej Bartos from uh, Credo Ventures, and um, managing partner from Arts Agree Partners, Brian Wartop, and Emilia Mamayova, who's also a managing partner of a private equity fund, Espira. So this is a real high competence here and a strong support as well for the business development. And then last but not least, we, we have this incredible investors network, which help us also a lot with their network. And um, when we started here at Impact Ventures, um, we created partly pro bono, but not only a great network of advisors as well, we can rely on. And we have a great advisory board who are specialists, European-wide specialists in, in impact, actually. So it's the combination which makes us really unique, I would say. And, and your co-founder, Better Vitek, uh, is uh, the one behind uh, Impact Hubs, right? In the right, Czech Republic. Right. So there is some synergy with Impact Hubs as well? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's actually where we started to um, look for our targets. Um, it's, it's the network of the Impact Hub. The Impact Hub network in the Czech Republic is an amazing place for social enterprises and social organizations in general. So, so um, all the accelerator programs are taking place there somehow. Um, and we have started to work with Better actually many years before we started Telia Impact Ventures. So I think this is a very strong um, cooperation here and um, we are really complementary, I would say. Since you started uh, the Tilia Impact Ventures uh, in the past decade, the last three years, uh, would you see a progress in the quality and quantity of the um, social entrepreneurs within the region? Oh. Yeah, absolutely, a lot's going on in the sector. It's a really, generally global, a very much growing sector. Um, I can tell you one global number, uh, assets under management in investment, impact investment amounted to $715 billion in, by the end of 2019. These are the statistics um, coming from the Global Impact Investment Network. Um, if you look at Europe, um, Impact investments started um, at the first decade of the century. Uh, as I mentioned before, the first one was um, in the UK and then Italy they started and some other countries of Western Europe. 2002 or about this time. Um, in Germany, um, 2009. So it's, it is it's a, still a very young industry in general. If you, even if you compare it with venture capital industry, a very young industry, um, but compared Comparing Western Europe and, and our region is a completely different story again. Uh, when we started in 2018, 
Um, we were the first one shortly after after started uh, another um, Hungarian-based um, social impact fund. But today, uh, by today, we still have less than a handful of these social impact funds in the entire region. So it's really still a big difference, even with Western Europe, where you have social impact funds in their fourth generation already, and um, West started a kind of thematic specialization. So if you look at Bridges Ventures, they would have today not only this general entrepreneurial social impact funds, they have a social property fund, they have um, what, they can, what they call social outcome funds. This is a special social finance construct about social bonds or they have an evergreen fund. Um, so they, they are starting to, to develop the sector even more. Um, with regard to the, this region, again, very much um, starting, and that reflects also the, the, the stage of the social entrepreneurship in general. Um, in Well, if I remember correctly, in, in 2019, again, um, the European Venture Philanthropy Association, who is a kind, the organization of the Investors for Impact in Europe, they had made an inquiry about the allocation of the assets um, of their membership, their membership uh, in terms of impact funds. And uh, from the entire allocation, only 0.5% were allocated to the CE region by that time. So it's, it's really still very, very tiny and we are very much at the beginning. This is one, it's one part of the story. But when we started three years ago, uh, I have the impression the sector has tremendously developed, even in our region, even in our country. We have, um, first of all, what changed really is um, the awareness. Well, everybody is talking about impact somehow, which also causes some confusions, by the way. So it's much more um, in, in everybody's mouth to talk about impact. And uh, that, that, from my perspective, it started a lot with um, Fridays for Future, with this movement that has really provoked at, uh, at the minimum among young people, but I think in the entire society, a lot more awareness. We have seen also much more deal flow coming for environmental projects since then. Um, and um, I can see what has really changed is the mindset of young people, even if over the couple last years, I would say, who want actually uh, to at least to con connect their career with, with some social good. You know, this mindset has really shifted and um, uh, the willingness to start something which is maybe a social enterprise is, is much, much higher now. Um, again, three years ago, we were looking very much at um, the social sector as defined impact hub network and so on, accelerator programs. In the meantime, we have shifted our focus when we look for new projects completely to the VC sector because we see a lot of projects coming also through the normal, what the classical uh, startup scene, uh, you find impactful projects. And we are looking now for what I would call social entrepreneurs, the people which have ideally some business expertise, um, but decide now to, to start a new ventures uh, to, to, to resolve one of these social problems, let's say. So that's our ideal target, I would say. And we can see more and more of these people. And this has really changed over the last couple of years. And the last thing I would like to mention, there are more impact funds, even in the Czech Republic. Uh, what is maybe for me the main difference is really if you feel or if you are accountable for impact which is the entire field of measuring and managing impact. And I think in this respect, we are still a little bit unique here. Also, as I mentioned before, um, everybody's talking about impact, but people mix more and more ESG and or sustainable investment and impact investment. I think it's important to distinguish here, um, impact investment goes much more beyond ESG investment or sustainable investment. It is not clicking the box of doing something positive, but it's really intentionally going into resolving a social problem with a business solution. That's the difference. How do you, within Telia Impact Ventures and with your startups, how do you go about measuring the impact? That's a very complex <laughs> question and a very complex subject. Uh, um, as I mentioned, we feel accountable or we are accountable for impact um, across the entire 
life cycle, life cycle of the project from an investor's point of view. So you start with screening and we have developed here our internal screening table, a kind of uh, table which helps us to assess different criteria, but most of all the impact. So as I mentioned before, you look at the depth and the scalability of the impact and the intention of the founder and um, the strategic goal of the project, if it aims at a system change or where's the level of impact it's created and so on and so on. And if it's measurable, and it's not always measurable or easily measurable. But once we decide to go ahead with this project, then it comes to this due diligence project. And here uh, we use actually um, some frameworks which are internationally acknowledged. It's called the Impact Management Project. But it's more a kind of framework which, which, which helps you to look at um, different dimensions of, of impact. Um, and they, they, it has five dimensions actually. Um, who is concerned uh, by this impact? Who is, who is the target group? Who feels the, 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 the impact? Um, and then what is the impact about? Um, how much is created of impact, which means really the measurability and, and um, the scalability of the impact. The, the most difficult part is the next one, it's the contribution, because it's a tricky part. You look at the project and say, okay, what would have happened in terms of impact even without this project? And that's actually an important question about if you want to define the impact of this certain project. And then important for investors is the risk assessment. So what are the risks that this impact may really happen? And we work a lot with the risk um, in the next stage also when we structure a deal. Um, and I'm not talking about the normal financial structuring now from, from the impact point of view. For example, if we have, um, we have in this fund still some loan structures, mezzanine structures, um, we work with risk premiums, uh, which are really dependent on uh, the level of impact which the project achieve, achieves over the entire lifetime of the project. Um, that's one thing. And we have come up with something we call um, a mission drift clause, because um, that's a kind of extreme case if you feel that a project you're invested in, you're an equity investor, for example, but it goes some, completely somewhere else with its technology, for example, not creating impact anymore. Then we said, it's, 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 it's your choice, but it's, we don't want to support this project anymore. But it's a kind of absolute downside project in, in terms of impact. So we, we try to incorporate risks we identify during the process into our documentation. And then at the next stage, we um, together with the investee, we uh, formulate an impact strategy for the expected lifetime of the project. And we define its most important, very precise KPIs to measure the progress in impact creation. And the KPIs, here we are always looking at the project as such, very specifically what kind of impact is created here and how you can best measure it. So that's, that's the, and then of course, past the investment, the most important phase, you work with the investee, you review the strategy every year, and we work on these KPIs the same way as we do with uh, working with, uh, with them on, on business KPIs. When investing into the startups who would actually come from the Czech Republic, which was the focus uh, mm -hmm. uh, currently, um, are you expecting them the, the startup definition that they would be able to grow exponentially, therefore going global? Well, we of course looking for such um, startups um, also in our portfolio, and um, um, it's it's uh, very different. I think um, impact can be very deep on some target groups, or it can scale a lot. And we have these different approaches in 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 our portfolio. I would say at the moment, but all our portfolio companies have at least. Um, regional European wide ambitions, I would say. Some of them have global ambitions. <laughs> A little bit back to the trends. How did COVID itself change the attitude, not only uh, the, the young generations, but also across the board uh, of people to go into the social entrepreneurship? 
I think uh, the entire pandemic has shown us how vulnerable our society is still is. That's, that's the main point I would like to mention here. We have seen, for example, um, uh, senior population, you know, how much isolated they are and what the risk that exposes to this society. So what I've seen here in social entrepreneurship, uh, a lot of new solution which would help, help in this respect. Um, and then, of course, um, other areas, environmental protection, all these things, but coming suddenly more visible and more crucial. Um, uh, but on the other side, it had some positive effect as well, if you see. I mean, for me, it was fascinating to see how collaboration can help um, to get vaccination on the market, you know. About priorities in vaccination and all this, this, this global collaboration um, is, is so important. And as I think that has been seen. On the other side, uh, from a pragmatic point of view, there's so much money coming in from the European Union um, for uh, recovery of the economies. And I think it's an absolutely great chance to make this recovery more sustainable. And if we understand this, um, then we see all the opportunities where, where we should go in and where we should create a sustainability. Uh, together with your partners in Delia Ventures, what have you learned, what, what lessons have you learned uh, while working with the founders? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, we have learned the lesson. I think every startup investor has learned it's all about people. It's all about people. And um, uh, as I mentioned before, it should be this alignment on impact, but it's not the only side. That's not the only side. In general, you look for founders which are strong personalities, which have a great passion for what they are doing and of all the capabilities to, to execute on this. Um, but that comes often also with a strong ego. And uh, I think a good founder is one who can put his ego aside and, and look at the good of the company only. Um, and uh, one who can um, listen also um, to the feedback of most of our customers, but also of their investors. <laughs> and um, reflect this feedback, uh, pivot then and um, look at the team, not, a, not as employees, but as a real team and, and develop this team. And uh, I think that's a, that's, that's a great important um, thing any founder should do. And um, that's one thing. The other thing is um, planning of resources and that's about the cash runway. I mean, we have experienced difficult times with the pandemic and we went with our portfolio companies through this. And um, you should never be taken by surprise of what can all happen. <laughs> so be prepared, be prepared in terms of planning and in terms of fundraising. For a startup, there's actually always fundraising time. <laughs> so once you do you finish one round, you should already prepare the next round. Or should be always in the mood. Um, to, to prepare fundraising and um, cash, cash runway is important and we have seen this especially during the last two years I would say but it's uh, essential for, for any startup to go forward so I think this focus um, these are maybe the most important lessons we have learned and we are learning them together with our NVST companies and, and similarly on the fundraising from the fund perspective how difficult or easy is to fundraise into the fund? I think it was a completely different story three years ago. And then it is now we have started to fundraise our new fund um, um, right now, actually. And um, three years ago, there was nearly no awareness about impact investment. You know, there were some, as I mentioned, our core investors were two foundations and uh, there are large foundations that had heard about impact investment. Uh, but then we had some around 20 um, mostly private individuals, which are our investors now. Um, and that was a lot about awareness building and, and a lot about explaining. And um, this is not philanthropy. 
and uh, you can do actually both. You can do the good for the society and you can have a financial return. And um, this awareness building, um, it's, I think, a lot easier now. And uh, not only for our investors, which have known us for three years now, but also for society in general, or for, for our new targets. But now this fund we are raising um, is much larger. That was a pilot fund, or is our first fund is a pilot fund. It's, it's meant to, to, to really try things and to, to start this um, investment strategy in the Czech Republic. But now it's really about growing this um, into the region. We do want to raise a fund who is not only targeted in the Czech Republic, but um, the wider CEA regions. Um, region and um, in this respect, for example, we need European money. Uh, we want to approach the European Investment Fund, which has a special entity for, for social impact funds, which is called the Social Impact Accelerator. So we will probably work with them, which sets already some rules. <laughs> you know, so that's, it's very specific, but it helps also tremendously to attract other investors. So that's the way um, many of our funds here in the Czech Republic have gone and, and we would also go this way. We still don't have available, I think, um, institutional investors, classical institutional investors for, for impact investing. So we will look primarily at family offices, um, which are globally kind of leading investor into impact investing. Globally, one, one, um, 25% of all family offices uh, are invested in impact uh, uh, assets. Um, doing impact investing actively. So that's our main target group. And of course, our existing investors, um, private individuals we will approach. And you talk to them in a different way. If you talk to the EIF, which has invested, I don't know, dozens of such funds, they know exactly what we are talking about. But if you talk to new investors, then it's still a little bit about awareness building. So it's a very complex issue. Um, I think. The advantage for us is that we have a portfolio to look at. We have really gained um, a lot of experience in the field, uh, trying out different financial instruments, uh, trying out different target groups, different impact themes. So I think we are well prepared to go for it. <laughs> Would the time frame, the, the investment horizon and also return on investment differ compared to VC funds? Um, impact investment is an investment strategy you choose and even this one is a very general term so it depends very much on, on, on what exactly which region you are investing in, uh, which uh, themes actually are you choosing. If you are for example looking into uh, environmental protection and green tech the green technology projects only, there is no reason not to aim for a market uh, risk adjusted return. But if you, for example, choose, um, and we will probably do a mixture of all of these um, projects which are aiming at developing countries, at the really poor people, then that needs patient capital and maybe lower returns. So um, it has also a kind of cultural component, impact investing, which has a long history in the US, for example, there are much more funds which are aiming now at market returns, risk-adjusted market returns. In Europe, it's not the case. In Europe, um, the majority, I think, is still doing below market returns due to this fact of the need for more patient capital for impact. Um, but it's returns which are, let's say, around 10%, I would say, or in this range. Uh, so a, a VC fund would probably shoot for higher return, but uh, our investors, I think, um, like the idea of, of, of um, let's say, a bit below market returns, but still creating this huge impact. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to patients? Good questions. I, I think um, here we are still in our own learning journey because um, we haven't exited yet our investments. Um, I, I, I would believe some of them still need slightly longer time to come to their full potential. Um, but our fund is structured as a classical fund. Uh, this, this next fund, five, five plus five years, it means five years investment fee and then five years for exit. So I hope um, still with more patient capital we fit in. Mm -hmm. 
And what lessons learned have you learned from running a small pilot fund? Yeah, it's painful. <laughs> it's painful operational wise because uh, when we started, um, uh, the team were still very uh, enthusiastic. So um, we all work together on this basis and, uh, um, you know, the areas are not great. Um, and in the meantime, of course, um, recently especially, we had some changes also in our team and you have to struggle with um, with the fit of your operational budget. This is one side and the other side is um, given this relatively small fund, we, we at the moment can't do follow on investments to our investees, which is more painful like checks. But we knew that from the very beginning, uh, since this is this piloting, the principle of impact investing and uh, we have since the very beginning uh, looked at the network of co-investors. So we are co-investing with other social impact funds, Western European based funds. We are co-investing with um, impact business angels. Uh, we are co-investing with classical venture capital. Um, so I think it needs this kind of collaboration, which is kind of useful as well for our investees, I would say. But I would be more than happy to be able to follow, make follow investments, which will be able to do with our next fund. When it comes to, uh, let's say, European and global uh, collaboration mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. impact investors. Mm -hmm. You are also a, a, a member of uh, Ashoka and also the EVPA New League. Can you please describe what these organizations aim to do? Yeah, um, thank you for this question. I have been working for many years um, with Ashoka, which is a global um, organization pioneering social entrepreneurship. Um, what I do or traditionally have, do, have been doing is to pick up the real innovators um, in, in social innovation and uh, help them not only financially but mostly with, with, with their entire network. Um, so examples, for example, the Wikipedia founder, uh, um, founder is, is, um, is one of the so-called uh, fellows, Ashoka fellows. We have also some great examples here in the Czech Republic. And I have been collaborating with them for, for many, many years as a part of the ASM, which is the Ashoka support network. These are people exactly creating this network um, with business background, uh, uh, helping with finance, but also with the expertise. And um, this organization was uh, gave me a lot of inspiration for what I'm doing now. I have met because I was involved early in, in activities of the organization in Vienna, since I'm German speaking, and also it's the, the kind of uh, center for Ashoka Europe, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. And um, I met there these social entrepreneurs long before I started actually Telia Impact Ventures. I met these social entrepreneurs and I was fascinated by this. And then I got a lot of support from Ashoka as well. They have a lot of experience in social finance. Uh, so we looking at uh, specific social finance structures uh, that came through the Ashoka network. Um, members, two members of our advisory board are coming from Ashoka, actually European network. Um, and our first investee was actually also an Ashoka fellow. So a lot connected with this organization. And the European Venture Philanthropy Association is actually the um, Association, Associ European Association of uh, Investors for Impact. And I was recently um, uh, elected a board member of this organization with some kind of responsibility for the CE region. And this is really a very powerful organization which um, very much focus on this stakeholder collaboration. So they would combine the entire investors network starting from foundations over impact investors, which are the core of the organizations, but also social corporate investors in Europe. So if you look for expertise, research on impact investment, that's the right place to go. Could you please evolve more on the principles of venture philanthropy and the difference between uh, yeah. impact investing? Yeah, that was actually a concept uh, historically, which was, was, was a bit earlier than impact investment. That was actually starting to, uh, um, I, we, we can call it also strategic philanthropy. 
So if you don't just give money, but you give money with a, with a strong purpose for a societal change, and you would follow on on this. You measure impact, you measure progress in this, and you manage the impact, and you stay strategically connected with this grant. Um, and uh, actually from this concept evolved the social impact investment later on. So it's more a kind of historical thing, but still there are uh, foundations which are providing this strategic guidance to the grantees and they're turning also partly now into impact investment. So it's a kind of, of chain which would comprise both. The major difference is that with uh, impact investing you expect return. Of your exactly, that, that you use different financial uh, instruments to go for a return, the, the capital is coming back and it's like a classical investment. It could be loans, for example, it could be equity, it could be any kind of uh, mezzanine, something in between. In social finance, we have some special structures, I would say, but, but that, that's, that's the principle. Uh, it, and, and grants are sometimes complementing this, you know, for organizations which are not yet at this stage, for example, but um, are getting there. And could you also define the term which you have used, uh, a social financing uh, for the audience? Yeah, social finance is uh, the sum of all financial instruments we use in, in, in the field. And um, they are not, normally not much different than in a classical sector. Also, we can have structures which are slightly different. Social bonds as a special structure in, 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 in social finance, I would say. Um, it's also called outcome um, related. And it's actually, um, just to give you an example, um, you have actually three parties. You have a, a service provider, um, an institution, mostly public institution, who has an interest in this service, and a capital provider. And um, if the service is provided in a way to the, to the public that it makes sense, that means that it's uh, valuable, then the actually the capital is paid back to the capital provider who initially financed the whole structure, the services. So it's something which is also specific for, for social finance and it's, it's growing in Western Europe, but also in, in Latin America, for example. It's, it's normally called social bonds, but it's not really the bond structure, social outcome structure. So this is just two examples which can um, illustrate that we are creative in social finance sometimes. And what is the attitude of uh, the uh, impact investors towards leveraging the public money uh, with the founders, with the startups and also within the funds? We already mentioned that uh, you actually do plan to use the, yes. the leverage of the yes. public money. And, mm -hmm. and is it the same with uh, the startups that it's typical that you would try to, with the founders, leverage some of some public funding? Uh, yes and not. We actually help them sometimes to get over this stage. Um, so, um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, <clears throat> it creates also less sustainability. Grants are normally available for a certain time period and social organizations are not really sustainable if they rely on grants only. Um, if we normally don't go into parallel structures. What is, can happen sometimes is that an organization can have uh, their start with, 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 with this kind of public financing, but once it comes to a business model, they should become self-sustaining with the help of, of capital of an investor, for example. So, um, and we more are now looking um, at companies which are not reliant on, on grants. Um, and regarding your first question, um, I think it's a bit compelled as, uh, to the venture capital industry years ago. Um, it, it, public, public money can really help to initiate things, you know. Um, for example, in, in Slovakia there was recently um, this, this public call for, for social impact investing. So. Um, in the Czech Republic, um, that has not really started to, to support social impact investors with capital from, from, from state money point of view. Um, but the, the, the European Investment Fund 
plays a crucial role in, in financing such funds. And um, <clears throat> I think it's the right thing to do, to, um, to make this kind of initial financing to, to support private, private initiatives. And um, again, as we have seen is in venture capital, that's uh, initial co-funding of, of European money, for example, was very important or is still to attract other investors. So I think um, it's more an initializing role than the um, entire financing role. Besides public money, what role do you see uh, universities to play in the uh, development of social entrepreneurship? I think a huge role actually, because um, we have discussed it also already a little bit. Um, there's this mind shift of the young, young generation. Uh, they want to see themselves creating some positive impact in their life. And I think universities should respond to this as well, um, to the role of future entrepreneurs, but also this, this social impact role. And um, I've been personally collaborating a lot with um, the University of Economics, with the Faculty of Entrepreneurship for, for many, many, many years. Um, and um, whenever I was at the university for any project discussion, I see this growing trend uh, among the young generation. And um, we, um, we are very happy. It's the second year that this university, this faculty in particular, is offering not only a bachelor course, but also a master course in social entrepreneurship. And um, that's great because that, that's what we need. We need uh, this, this long-term view on this. this um, it's, a, in fact, the education of an entire generation. And um, when I talk sometimes to these students uh, and I ask them to plan to found a social enterprise, and I said, uh, maybe not, by, uh, but I'm a future entrepreneur and I think that is so important to me for my future, you know. And that's exactly about it, you know. Maybe we don't see social entrepreneurs, but we see entrepreneurs which have a mindset which goes in the right direction. And that's, that's absolutely crucial. A holistic view, a change from the shareholder uh, capitalism exactly. to stakeholder exactly. capitalism, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. What would you actually advise uh, to uh, potential startup founders? Um, do it, first of all. <laughs> it's always important to start. Um, find the right people to connect with and, and learn. I mean, depending on where you are, if you have some business experience, just go for the right investors as us, for example. Uh, but live your vision, live your passion, that's, that's the most important thing. And if you feel you need still support, go to a social accelerator program or even a classical startup accelerator program um, and, and come to us, we can help as well. Connect with like-minded people and um, create a team and, and, and just start. <laughs> Thank you very much, Silke. And what would be, please, your um, plans for the next year or so? Oh, this is very clear. We um, have still to make, let's say, three, two to three investments next year. And um, in our first fund, and then, of course, to work with all our portfolio companies towards the exit. Um, and then, of course, fundraising for Tilia 2, which um, I think is a absolutely priority now for us and uh, we hope uh, we we have prepared well for this we have not only all this expertise we have created in the meantime but our team has also changed and uh, we have now an um, extremely good team a combination of um, different backgrounds also technology background entrepreneurial background investment background and impact background so we are well prepared for this and i think by in a year's time, I hope we will be there <laughs> with Celia too. Best of luck with that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Silke. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this fifth episode of Purple Ventures Zoom video podcast, this time focused on uh, impact investing and social entrepreneurship. Uh, if you like the subject of venture capital investing, please subscribe. And if you want to know more about us, go ahead and reach out to us through our website. Mm -hmm.